The Silver Star entry on the Rally Nuts stages would see some new faces coming out to do battle. Ben Friend leading our crews away then. George Lepley brings out a new BRM engine in that Avenger this weekend, which means he starts among the main field contenders. Would that, though, make a difference? It would remain to be seen. On we go to the stages then as usual, and it would be the lead for our championship newcomers, Ben Friend, Cliffy Simmons alongside. They take a small advantage at the top of our leaderboard. They reach the mid point in the rally. That lead would be over current Silver Star favourites, George Lepley and Tom Woodburn. The pair out, as we mentioned, with a new BRM engine this weekend, which puts them in the H3 class. It wasn't quite going to plan, though. The gearbox not quite working as well as the engine was, slowing their pace somewhat seven seconds back from the lead at this stage. It would be a good start to the event, meanwhile, for Andrew Davison and Tom Murphy. They take the final step on the podium at this stage after the morning stages, something they would, of course, be looking to keep hold of into the afternoon. But they need pace as well as reliability, not two things which have always come so easily this season for the pair. The good news for Davison would be the gap back to fourth place, which was at this stage 25 seconds over this pair. Bob Vardy, Karen Tomlinson, they lead the B10 class from just outside our podium positions. But could they find half a minute in the two afternoon stages? In the R2 class, it would be the lead for this man, Tony Simpson, Ian Bevan alongside. They lead the way in the class from fifth place on the leaderboard. A strong start to the rally for the pair then. They were driving well this weekend, everything coming together. Chasing Simpson down though for that R2 lead would be Perry Gardner and Keaton Williams. The gap was close as well, just two seconds in it at this stage in the rally. And indeed, it would be close in all of our podium positions in the class. James Giddings and Sean Cunniff just a further four seconds back from Gardner in third. Zach Hughes and Tom Wood would once again take the lead in the N3 class in the older model Fiesta. It was going well for them this season as well so far, and this weekend was looking to be more of the same. Eighth place on the leaderboard for now, a strong position to be fighting from too. Just behind Hughes and Wood on the overall leaderboard were Rob Wright and Terry Mallin. The pair not in the same class, of course. They were fighting in the B11 class, for that matter. They held second place in that class at this stage as well. And rounding out the top 10 now were Tommy Meadows and Graham Wilde. Nine seconds back from the podium, R2 class fight. Not something that they couldn't chase for in the afternoon, though. A bit of red mist setting in before two long stages to finish the rally. And in some of the class, places outside of the top 10 staring down those two long stages. It will be 11th overall and the lead in the B12 class for Colin Griffiths and Perida Davies in that BMW. For Rex Island and Adrian Scadding, it will be the lead in the H2 class. In fact, they were the only ones competing in the class this weekend, so all they had to do was make sure that they got it to the finish. But these stages are long and gruelling and they're quick as well, so that in itself can be somewhat of a challenge. With our category leaders out in front for the H3 class, it will be up to Steve Ward and Mike Crawford to take up third. Not something that was likely to change either without some notable retirements up ahead. And it would be another good run in the N3 class for Bobby Mitchell and Shannon Turnbull. They start the rally off with second place, although they had some work to do if they were to catch up that time to Zach Hughes up ahead. The deficit to third, though, was hardly insurmountable. David Kelly and Kenny Bustard were there, third in the N3 class as well as 15th overall, and just three seconds the gap to Mitchell. For Alan McDowell and Gavin Hesseltine, it would be second in B12. They were down in 16th place on the leaderboard, which sounds like quite a way off the lead, but in fact, they were only just over a minute off that lead overall, showing just how close the fight was in Silver Star this season. And one crew that could, and probably should have been fighting far higher up the results than they were, were Owen McMacken and Lee Taylor. Third in the class at this stage, 19th on the leaderboard. The pair spin the car on the opening stage of the day, losing a handful of valuable time, and even needing some assistance from the spectators. For Rob Bradley and Kevin Booth, it will be third in B11. They end the morning with 25th on the leaderboard. 
And just behind them on the overall results at this stage were Phil Clark and Steve Pugh. Second in B10 for the pair at this stage in the rally. So we're four stages down and two long, gruelling stages to go to make up the afternoon and to reach the finish of this rally. The results in the Silver Star look like this. Ben, good morning for you and uh, that's a good battle out there. Yeah, it's good. It's nice and close. Um, we had a bit of a, a dodgy stage on stage one. I had a spin and stalled it. Um, but no, really happy with how it's gone. It's nice and close. Well, those problems taken into account then, your pace must be pretty good. So this afternoon, are you confident? Yeah, I like um, the half and stage suits us well and uh, it's a good favourite of mine. So we'll have a good push and see what happens. Not many seconds in it. You've got a new engine, a new running order and some new t equipment to get used to. Yeah, it's um, been a difficult morning. Like I've been trying hard, but the times just aren't there. Um, I think we identified with a bit of a small issue um, in service. So a bit of a wounded car for this afternoon. But like I say, there's only six or eight seconds in it. For, um, so I don't know, we're very close. We'll have to get absolutely flat out and just see what happens at the end of the day. But uh, obviously we're here for the championship points. And uh, yeah, I've got to consider that too. But we'll have a good push. Well, we like to hear the words absolutely flat out. So we'll look forward to this afternoon now. Yeah, you should do. Thank you. Andy, it seems like the campaign's back on track after a bit of a shaky start this season. Yeah, it seems to be, yeah. Obviously, the last event was quite difficult in, in this car, sort of a bit too much power, which is often, not often you're seeing that, but last event it was. Um, yeah. well, at least you didn't make Tom get out of the car and waddle up the stage in the snow this time. No, there is that. No, there is that. But uh, as I say, well, uh, it's, it's, it's I don't know, better in these conditions, really, for us. So, uh, yeah, it's entertaining. On to the second half of the day then, and there would be no change for Phil Clark and Steve Pugh. They end the rally with second place in B10 this weekend. There would be some change though in B11. Richard Warren and Chris Deal taking third in the class through the afternoon stages on a bit of a charge in ending the rally with 23rd overall. There'd be some afternoon frustration and a drop down the class results as a result of that for Colin Griffiths and Perida Davies. They end the rally with second in the B12 class after leading all morning. Bittersweet, but still a good result from the BMW pair. No change in the class, no surprise there, but they were doing exactly what they came here to do. Rex Island and Adrian Scadding the only ones in H2, so that class position was theirs. In the end, three class though, it will be third for David Kelly and Kenny Bustard. A good end to the rally for the Irish pair. There would be no change though through the afternoon stages for Bobby Mitchell and Shannon Turnbull in that class either. They end the rally with second in N3 as well as 12th on the leaderboard. After that valuable time lost in the morning, it was all about trying to gain that back in the next few stages or at least limiting the damage for Owen McMackin and Lee Taylor. They do manage to get themselves up as far as 11th, which was good enough for the B12 class victory this weekend. Not a bad comeback. On to our top 10 in Silver Star then, and it would be that 10th place for Zach Hughes and Tom Wood. The pair taking another victory in N3 this weekend as well with that result. Steve Ward and Mike Crawford get themselves up into the top 10 through the afternoon, ending the rally with ninth and still keeping hold of that third in H3 as well. For Rob Wright and Terry Mallon, it will be second in the B11 class. The gaps to the leaders in the category had grown through the afternoon, but they'd end the rally with eighth overall. Meanwhile, it was probably fair to say it had been a successful weekend for Bob Vardy and Karen Tomlinson. They take the B10 class victory this weekend, as well as seventh place overall in the Fiesta. There was some last ditch disappointment though for James Giddings and Sean Cuniff, quite literally. They go off within the last mile of the final stage of the day, unable to get out of the ditch and having to end their rally so close to the finish and a strong result. For Tommy Meadows and Graham Wilde, then it would be promotion in that R2 class. They now step up to take third place and end the rally on a high. There was more change and a bit more disappointment as well in the R2 class for Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan. They slip out of the class lead through the afternoon stages, dropping some pace and having to settle for second place. But the fight was still close, just 10 seconds back from that class lead. And that all meant the victory this weekend would belong to Perry Gardner and Keaton Williams. A good end to round three, taking maximum points in the R2 Cup. 
onto our overall podium places then, and it would be a good end to the rally for Andrew Davison and Tom Murphy, managing to keep hold of that third overall, as well as taking the B11 class win in the process. For Ben Friend and Cliff Simmons, it will be second. The victory sadly evading them this time out, but the pair had showed some amazing pace out there on the stages in what was still a new car to them, let's not forget. But that all, of course, means that it's victory this weekend for the seemingly unstoppable George Lepley and Tom Woodburn. The pair overcome and drive to the problems on the car this weekend and put that extra power to good use, even if it was through one less wheel than they'd had imagined. Taking victory by the end of the rally by 12 seconds. So before we chat to our crews at the finish of this exciting Rally Nuts stages, here's confirmation of the final results in the Silver Star this weekend at round three of the BTRDA Rally Series. Well, George, sometimes rally driver excuses get a little too much, but yours today is a pretty good one. One wheel drive, as confirmed by the team at service, and you still overhauled to take the win today with that brand new BRM engine. What a day for you. Yeah, what a day for the team, you know. We've got to say a big thank you to Baz and Peter John Dell and everyone else because uh, they've put it in this week and we've had the engine and first win for the BRM, so it's a really, really good day. We've not been without the problems, but this last two stages just really, really went for it and uh, trusting Tom and Tom did a great job and yeah, it all came together. Just, just really, really happy and just really good day, so thank you, yeah. Good. This really must go down with the problems you had. It really must go down as your best win yet? Yeah, definitely this year. Um, really enjoy this one, and especially the last two stages. Like, just felt like something else. Like, one of my favourite two stages I've ever done. So yeah, really happy, and I can't wait for the next one. Ben, that is a good day in the forests, right? Yeah, yeah, well happy. It's been a really close day with, with Tom and George all day, and it's, yeah, couldn't ask much more really. And of course, when you're out here fighting, you do do this for fun at the end of the day, or at least part of it for fun. <laughs> you do want a close fight, and you do want people pushing hard. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had a great life all day, and yeah, serious enough, but uh, no, it's good fun. Really. Are good. you thinking about the championship yet? Yeah, we'd, we'd already penciled in uh, the planes and the grist, so we might do the woodpeck as well and see. <laughs> Andy, a podium at the end of a, a tough, but I think given how the season's gone so far for you, enjoyable rally. Yeah, very enjoyable. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting, and uh, just one thing that was bugging me. Uh, I think Wayne will probably yeah uh, be able to help. I uh, want to know what uh, barebacking is really, but uh, it's you when know. you ride a horse without a saddle. Ah, I see. Right. Okay. That'll be be like Lepley's back tyres at the moment then. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it was good, enjoyable, uh, good, enjoyable uh, afternoon really. You know. Just had, didn't quite carry the same pace we had this morning or if if we did the other lads had, had stepped up a bit more fair play to them you know because it was it, we had some exciting moments and had some 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 angles out of the old girl so yeah it was, it was enjoyable nice to do a few different stages some angles out of the old girl congratulations thank you very much cheers well another exciting day in the forests for the jordan road surfacing btrda silver star category what a fight we had, and it isn't just escorts now fighting at the top of this category, because we've got Sunbeams, and of course we've got this Avenger, which with this new engine, despite the issues today, George might just make his name with, and we're looking forward to seeing how that fight between these guys hots up in the following rounds. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching.